So I grew up, um, I was born in Williams Lake. My dad was the uh, cow boss on the second biggest cow ranch in all of Canada. And I, yeah, grew up around horses and cows and more animals than people, so. My parents are strong believers that you don't eat till your animals eat, so <laughs> everything gets fed in the morning, everything gets fed in the evening, and then you go inside when the sun goes down. I had a heart condition when I was young, and it, I had it surgically repaired two years ago, and the nurses were always very understanding and very um, empathetic and compassionate. Nursing just felt like a natural calling because of that part of the emotion that was tied to it. I started nursing five years ago. I'm currently working on my nurse practitioner for the University of Calgary. My dad says I made the right choice because he basically told me I haven't had a day off since they were born. Mm. Um, you can go do things and have a life and mm. that's what they want for us. How are you? Hey, Mike. It's, good to see you. Yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, no. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. All right. Wow. Nice place. Thanks. I think a lot of people think about the hospital as mm -hmm. a place where you go and you're cared for, mm -hmm. um, and everyone expects that care to be like top notch. Mm -hmm. You know. Immediately, that trust is instilled in you, and you have to follow up and make sure that you're capable of taking care of those people at the level that. They're expecting you to be able to, but we're human. Hmm. We make mistakes. Like I had a nurse buy me a coffee because I reacted to her making a mistake. She was crying. She was so scared to tell me for a while. And then I was like, take a deep breath. I was like, did you kill him? <laughs> and she's like, well, no, then we're okay. <laughs> Let's deal with this. I mean, that whole idea of having people that you work with watching out for you, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, and how do you actually as a team have to care for each other, you know, whether it's a physician who's your mentor or a, a new colleague that you're trying to help out, you know, or someone who makes a mistake, mm -hmm. you know, um, those are all aspects of caregiving that I think we don't explore very often. No, I agree with you. There needs to be maybe more attention paid to caring for the caregivers, because if no one's caring for them, who's gonna care for everyone else, right? So, cause like they can only do so much to take care of themselves when they're working six, 12 hour shifts in a row or whatever else. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? How would you say you care for the caregivers? In, in the <laughs> um, I feel like knowing people and knowing the relationships, having an understanding of that person as an individual is very important because some people respond really well to silence and just being in the room with them. Whereas other people, you need to hug them or some people just need to cry or mm -hmm. um, just knowing the person well enough to support them in the way that they require it. Mm -hmm. When people can't talk about things, they harbor it and it just builds mm -hmm. and builds. So they assume like if you're part of that profession, you must be able to deal with it and mm -hmm. Sometimes that's not the case, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. We're gonna try and put together a little three minute digital story um, about your experience as a caregiver. Um, and then we'll be able to show that to some of your colleagues. So let's, uh, let's just get you to read, um, I guess, uh, this part right here. I'm a proud person and I really don't like people seeing me when I am vulnerable. I like to be in control and I don't like to show emotion. So it is hard for me to tell the story of the day I collapsed at work because every time I tell it, I cry. At 24 years old, I had been working as a registered nurse in an orthopedic ward for only six months and I was loving it. One afternoon when I came into work, I wasn't feeling myself. I started to sweat and became dizzy and nauseous. I sat down in the report room and collapsed. How do you feel about uh, sharing this? I'm gonna have to be so vulnerable for this and that's, that's not something I ever let myself be, but mm -hmm. it's uh, something you, I think, have to be at some point in your life, especially when you work with people you're dealing with at their most vulnerable in order to completely relate to your patients. Yeah. You have to be able to understand what they're going through, right? So. Yeah. 
You guys are going to be leaders of the healthcare system in the future. And, uh, and I think it's really important to have this conversation in the healthcare system as well as with patients and families. So that's partly what today is about, is we just wanted to show you Austin's story uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, get to chat about it a little bit. I woke up bruised, sore, intubated, and tied to the bed rails in the ICU, surrounded by my family and friends staring down at me. I had questions. A few minutes later, they removed the breathing tube and an ICU nurse appeared next to my bed. She started explaining that I had a grand mal seizure and stopped breathing, and that I was trying to pull out my breathing tube, so they had tied me to the bed. Then she started talking about how I would probably had a seizure disorder and would lose my nursing license. Then she said that I would have to be moved to another hospital because it was a conflict of interest for me to be treated at the hospital I worked in. It was completely overwhelming. Less than an hour later, I stumbled out of the ICU, knowing that it was a bad idea, but all I wanted to do was go home. A couple weeks later, I was terrified as I walked into the hospital for my first shift back. I still didn't know what had caused the seizure, but I was more worried about how my colleagues would respond after seeing me collapse in front of them. I walked through the double doors of the unit and rounded the corner, expecting stares and silence. Instead, there were sincere smiles and hugs. It felt like people actually wanted to know how I was, not just how I felt physically, but how I felt emotionally. I was so overwhelmed that these people who had only known me for a short time had done all these things for me and my family, and the anger and the fear I felt about the whole situation quickly melted away. After many tests and consultations, they still don't know why I had the seizure, but I don't think about that part of the story anymore. What sticks with me is how I felt. I still don't know why I cry when I tell this story, but I don't think it's because of the pain or the frustration or the vulnerability. I think it is because I recognize how much my colleagues cared for me, even when they hadn't provided any care. So that's wow. that. <laughs> I'm so proud of you right now. <laughs> I'm so impressed that uh, classmate, I never know that she experienced so much. I mean, yeah. I'm very proud of mm -hmm. her. Yeah. yeah. Or you were willing to share this very personal story with us. So I really appreciate the trust you're putting in us. It was just overwhelming to me to have so many people, like just like you guys, like it was like having a second family that I never anticipated, right? So, I really appreciate you trusting us enough to show mm -hmm. it to us, and uh, I think it just really hits home for me that your family is your work family too, right? Mm -hmm. Nurses, as healthcare providers, we need to hear these stories too, mm -hmm. yeah. and rem remind ourselves why we're doing this. You, you spend all day listening to patients and families, right? But how often do we actually listen to each other? Hello. So how are you feeling? <sighs> Better now. <laughs> yeah. So what did you think about the conversation? Uh, I didn't expect so much. We're proud of you. I didn't expect so many personal comments to be made to me. I yeah. expected it to be more just like a general, broad conversation. Yeah. I thought it was pretty beautiful, actually. <laughs> like, it was a real example of healthcare workers supporting each other. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely the right group to give it yeah, the presentation I think so. to. Yeah. Yeah. I think to talk about it like this was like the closure I needed around the incident. 